Hello YouTube. Locke Cole, one of the freshest characters in the entire Final Fantasy franchise actually, getting his LD and BT. Is he overhyped? Yes and no. The perfect non-answer. Stick around to hear what I have to say. In this video, before you pull on Locke, I'll give you some things to think about before you potentially use your limited resources. I'm sure you all have Tifa by now anyways. Shout out Italy. If you're not familiar with my channel, I play both JP and Global, and I use some of that knowledge and experience to help try and inform others. Let me know what you're thinking, go in the comments, leave a comment, your plans for the banner, polls, etc., and who you're bringing to the event. While you're here, like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. You can also support the channel with a dollar. Uh, I respond to all of your comments and you get some emotes. So let's talk Locke. Locke is a damage dealer with, I guess it's not really stance based, but he's got some RNG in his kit that determines what kind of attacks he can do. And he adds some utility with his dispels and heals. His LD streamlines him a lot and gives him a big damage button, at least easier access to it. So let's break it down. His skill one, sneak slash, and I'm only gonna talk about the plus versions because that's the only button you should be pressing, is now four HP attacks. And his skill two is now a double brave plus HP attack that batteries the party even more after the heal and damage. Just an FYI, Locke has a lot going on in his kit, but you'll largely be ignoring most of it, so I'm only gonna be talking about the relevant parts. So his Miracle Shoes stance, one of two RNG stances he can get. The, uh, the HP attack attached to it and the buff really got changed up. The Miracle Shoes HP attack is a three hit Brave with HP now, and it changes Sneak Slash to the plus version. So if you mess up and get this one, you can immediately dump it and get a reroll on Sneak Slash Plus to potentially get Genji Gloves, which is the one you really want. However, something really cool and really nerdy that you're probably never gonna use is that the Miracle Shoes buff gives Locke 100% HP damage resistance and 70% Brave damage resist. So if for some reason you know you're gonna eat an attack, you could potentially hold onto this for some reason. It's really cool, you'd probably never use it anyways to dump it immediately, but something to call out. Now let's talk about Locke's EX. The attack itself now has four HP attacks, nothing special there. But the fun part is that when you have Locke's EX buff active, the Master Scroll, he gets this on quest start and after using EX. If Locke also has Genji Gloves active, again, one of his RNG buffs, his HP turns into a nuke. Genji Glove X Master Scroll, which is apparently an FF6 reference that I have not gotten because I have not finished the game. This special HP attack is where a lot of Locke's damage comes from. It is a two hit Brave plus HP attack eight times. Whew. Sneak Slash becomes Sneak Slash Plus. Again, you're never gonna press the non plus version and he gets a special Brave Plus now after using this as well. It's called Mug Thief Spracer and he will be able to guarantee Genji Gloves after this. See where I'm going? Locke's play with his level 90 is focused on getting both of these items up at the same time so you can use that nuke HP. His LD is very good damage, 5 hit, AoE, split Brave plus HP. He gets a new overhead that he does have on quest start. On top of the offensive stats he gets, he gets Brave Retain like Aroha and Jekt. And probably someone else that I'm forgetting. Brave Retain being he doesn't consume all of his Brave when he HP attacks. And Locks is at 40%. So if Lock does a HP attack for 100, he will be left with 40 Brave, not zero. This means he can have a lot of Brave in between his HP attacks. It's a damage increase. Using this LD on top of refreshing his overhead also gives the benefit of queuing up his special nuke HP plus. It gives him both Genji Glove and Master Scroll, and it sets up his Brave Plus to guarantee Genji afterwards. His additional ability got buffed also to cleanse all of Locke's debuffs. It is a 100% gravity shave and it dispels four buffs from the target and it still has an RNG chance to give Locke either Genji or Miracle. Lastly, if you thought this character wasn't dumb enough, he has a BT on top of all of this. With this BT effect active, all party brave attacks are now defense ignore. Yes, he enchants defense ignore. And provided he's green, he is giving party brave damage up 30% and brave cap up 30%. And if anyone takes HP damage that drops them below 50%, provided they're still alive, Locke will heal them back up to 50%. This is what Bosch does for himself. It's not party last stand. If you take a lethal attack, you'll still die. But if you take damage and live and you're below 50%, you will just be healed back up to that. This is great for helping keep people alive. Ignore defense enchant is also just very silly. So how do you use Locke in practice? It's actually not that complicated. There's a lot of details and nuance to his kit. And if I haven't already, I plan to release a video explaining how simple it is and showing some examples in context. But the gist of it is you just want to focus on getting the Genji Gloves item. You need the EX item as the other half to do the nuke HP+, but all you have to do to get that is use EX. 
your EX will charge eventually, so you can just work towards getting Genji Gloves. You'll know if you have Master Scroll because the HP attack will show that you have Master Scroll. If you got neither, just work on getting Genji while you charge the EX. So just sneak slash plus. This is where some of the RNG comes into play. If you get Miracle, just press HP, dump it, and Sneak Slash will change back into the plus version. Just keep trying. Additional ability also has a Genji or Master roll. If your Mug's Thief Bracer is up, this will guarantee you have Genji. So if you already got the EX buff up, you can press that if it's up. Don't worry about getting it. If it's not up, just don't worry. Or if you're feeling really lazy because the bosses have no HP lately, you could just press LD and guarantee you'll get the big HP afterwards. If you want to stall and have a safe skill, just hit skill 2. But to make it even simpler, if you don't know what to do, press skill 1 plus or press LD. And press EX if it's up and you'll get pretty much 80% of Locke's main damage out of him. No need to make it complicated. I also got to talk about Tifa real quick. She didn't get much. She didn't need much. She got offensive stats and her EX actually does damage relative to the rest of her overpowered kit. She hasn't stopped being relevant and she won't stop. Shout out Italy. So now for my lock analysis. His strengths are like his, his BT, like it's a great idea for people who aren't great at the game who die a lot. It won't keep you alive through Lufenia orbs like Ico will, but it will definitely help you from taking stuff that's lethal, provided you're not getting one shot by like massive giant attacks. He also brings a ton of damage to the table. Eight HP attacks on one button is great because that has a high damage ceiling. Stack enough effects and damage up, etc., and you'll be doing a million damage with ease. Defense Ignore Enchant helps everyone hit hard for people who don't quite understand team building and how to put a team together to make everyone do damage, and Locke kind of shortcuts that by making everyone ignore defense. There is a bit of a learning curve, it's not that much. Again, just focus on getting Ganji Gloves, and everything else will fall into place. So for the crowd who is allergic to learning literally anything in this game and demands content be catered to them, I don't know if they'll be able to adapt to Locke. But he really is super straightforward. It's one of those cases of, on paper it sounds complicated, but in practice you're like, oh, that's it. The RNG is largely overstated. Turn manipulation, good damage, utility and dispel and heals and party battery, all that stuff. Locke is really like a jack of all trades, master of all those same trades. Weaknesses, while I said the RNG isn't that big of a deal, there are scenarios where you can just keep rolling miracle shoes and never get Kenji, but at some point you can just get out of that loop Press, uh, press LD. Honestly, if I roll Miracle Shoes twice, I'm just gonna say screw it and press LD. Really not that big of a deal. Uh, the complexity may confuse people, again, the crowd who doesn't wanna learn anything. I don't think Locke is complex in the slightest. It took a little bit of practice, but people are allergic to that as well. And some people, some veterans might feel that he is overkill for content. I know I certainly felt that way because he largely, once I understood how to maximize his damage, he was doing a lot of damage. He was keeping the party alive. He was helping us hit hard. And there really was negative challenge at that point, which I didn't find very entertaining. So I kind of bench lock shortly after I got him. Christ, what a downside. He might make the game boring because he's too strong. I think it really is too strong when we didn't need him to be. There's no teams I really recommend you put him in because he's he's a damage dealer. So you really build the team around your damage and whatever orb you're fighting. He will be helpful throughout a cycle. Transcendent 7, they want him on the left for the multiple HP attacks. In the middle, they want people who can heal with skills. And he'll keep you above 50% so nothing ever bothers you. And he'll his uh, BT effect will cut through their high defense. You can hit the defense ignore orb for, uh, what's it called? Edgar's intersecting will. And then he'll hit the consecutive turns orb for Papalimo's fight. Beyond that, he'll just like keep you alive in tons of future content. Uh, something that screams lock to me is uh, Sador's fight, which has those thresholds. We got this on the early Lena event. That was a fast forward of that fight. Um, those threshold attacks messing you up and lock just healing you back up to 50% after every single HP attack. Uh, you're, like really, if if you're not taking lethal damage and uh, lock can keep you alive, then you're pretty much invincible. Lock friend can also do this in a pinch. He's just a fantastic unit all around. So what are my plans? Skip the banner entirely. I already have Tifa, and I do not see myself using Locke for the aforementioned reasons that he would be complete overkill. My damage is sufficient and I don't need him. I don't think LD only Locke is a worthy investment. I'll go into that later. And so yeah, this banner is not for me. I'm gonna be investing in Furion, which I'll be covering in a different video. He does rerun down the line uh, on paper alongside Noel's BT and Noctis's BT, along with his BT as well, so I'd much rather pick them up there, just for collection. The event is Transcendence, thankfully this one is much easier than 6, this stage rolls over, especially if you have Locke. The sides, base Lufania, barely has any health. The orb is plus 5, provided you do an HP attack that does at least 4 HP attacks. Ooh, that's not really hard to do. 
it's the palom lizards i think it is no it's the alpha no lizards and you gotta break them at points but we're so strong that it doesn't matter literally bring anyone i don't know this is functionally a non-orb because we have so many people who can hit this the right side i believe is traps follow-ups uh preemptive attacks you just need an attack to go off once something happens like a buff or a debuff this is to sell Firion because of his ld trap you can like vivi snow uh Jagran, Machina with his LD trap, Maria, Celez, Trey. There's, there's a list, long list of people who can do this. Furion, I think base BT can solo this potentially, or is maybe it's BT plus. I don't remember, but this stage also rolls over. It's just the uh, the ghosts, the saving ghosts. Super easy fight. On the left, I'm gonna probably use Zach and two other randoms, and on the right, I'm probably gonna use Fury and Maria and somebody else. The middle is Lufenia plus, but this thing barely has any HP. 15 mil each, 30 mil total. The orb is plus three on doing something that heals for at least 20% of HP. It's also plus two if the bosses take a turn. There's a long list of people that hit this. Some more recent examples are Snow, Furion, Zach, Garnett, Maria, Kate Sith, Selfie, Lena, Porum Agrius, Locke, Skill 2, Lude. When the orb is up, and the orb will be up at the start of the battle and once the boss goes below 50%, there's an HP poison aura. So really all you gotta worry about is staying healthy. These guys only have one HP attack. However, if your HP drops below 30%, they will do a brave attack on you. Ooh, scary. But it does drop your buffs. It does reduce the duration of your buffs, I should say, by four turns. So that might put you in a bad spot, but on their turns, unless they have a lot of brave, they'll just brave attack you. And they start glowing yellow and their defense spikes. So this is when Locke's BT effect is supposed to cut through them. So if you don't have any way to cut through that, bring some gravity or something. Some Maria's traps will be helpful here. Or maybe sap them with Sarah. Or you can just defense ignore through them. Jagran is actually pretty solid for this tier because of that. Could zack through it. You could just eat the HP attack if they have a lot of brave on their turn. And then heal up afterwards. Not a very challenging stage in the slightest if you know I stay alive. Just like, just tank it. It's not asking for a lot compared to tier 7. And we have the damage to kind of just blow this one up. It, this fight should take like 10-15 minutes at max if you've been playing long enough. I plan on bringing Furion, Maria, and Zack. I'll cut through it with Zack, eat through any lethal HP attacks, Maria will shave them down with battery and brave and stuff like that. Not a difficult stage. In fact, one of the easiest. Not as easy as tier three, but probably second easiest. To get rid of their defense spike, a couple of these conditions need to be satisfied 20 times. They need to take a turn, they need to get a defense ignore brave attack, or you need to use a heal. The brave game reduction on the stage is hilariously low. You can actually end up just battering through a lot of it. Kate Sith stonks too. But yeah, not a hard transcendence at all. The next hard one will be nine, so just cruise control right now. So, with all that out the way, before you pull on this banner, what's my opinion? As usual, this is from a meta perspective, a resource saving perspective. If you're already decided, by all means, do what you gotta do. But it's just some things to think about from people who are potentially trying to save or don't really know what to do. If you're bad at the game, this is the banner to pull on. Get Locks LD. I wouldn't chase his BT on this banner because uh, there's also some other really good characters in this cycle, but definitely you want to take the first plunge and get Lox LD. That BT will help keep you alive. The defense ignore enchant will help you hit higher numbers if you don't know how to team build yet, and it will be a band-aid for some of the things you don't quite understand yet. Uh, if they don't move Ico's LD around on the campaign, and I'm recording this before we even get the live stream, so I don't I don't know what's coming in the future, but if Ico's LD is on this cycle, uh, the smartest decision for people who are not good at the game is to get both uh, Ico's LD while also guaranteeing locks burst. These two together will make you nigh unkillable and you could punch through a lot of content and maybe learn the game in the process. The second banner I'd recommend getting Locks BT on is the Papa Limo and Dark Cecil banner. Papa Limo is a great DPS provided you fully invest in him. I think he's like a, a cut above the rest. And Dark Cecil is a 20% HP damage up call. Okay, Yun, but that call is evergreen. For people more established in the game, more veterans, if your damage is up to par, please do not feel the need to invest in Locke. He is complete overkill. Again, I had this experience in JP where I was like, oh wow, Locke is so good. He makes this boring garbage time content even more boring. Wow, I don't want to use him anymore. That's a green I could have used somewhere down the line on someone I enjoy using a bit more. If you're already decent at the game, you have a well-established roster with good like DPS options. You can kind of skip Locke. He is complete overkill. Overkill for a boring era. Those decision points uh, with his items and stuff, it really isn't all that. You do it once, you're like, oh wait, this really isn't that complicated. Yeah, just, uh, it's a shame because he's got so much cool stuff. Like there's a lot of nerdy gimmicks with the miracle shoes and the turn manipulation, but it ends up being complete overkill because he does so much damage and he has such a busted effect. Do not by any means invest in Locke if he's going to be LD only with base high armor. He's a damage dealer, so you need to go all the way or nothing at all. Locke LD only will be outclassed, even though he can get the nukes from his LD. 
As I keep saying, you are better off nowadays making full investments and making them last rather than making half-assed investments and bringing busted supports alongside them. You're just wasting your time and resources at that point. Tifa is also amazing, still, and I know a lot of people who don't have her already would be interested in getting her here now. And while she's very good, I also wouldn't recommend going for her if you're just trying to save, but she's hot, so. Everyone else is getting brought up to Tifa level nowadays, so. It's a hard recommendation there. So ultimately, this is an amazing new player banner and a I'm not very good at the game banner. You just have to go in all the way for luck. Dagger ultimate weapon also has the added benefit of being on Layla, who is another help me, I'm not great at the game unit. So you get mileage out of that ultimate weapon. But for veterans and people who are trying to spice the game up, lock is not the way. Unless you like overkill, then lock is complete overkill. But if your damage is good, I don't have any reason to recommend him. And by the time we get a bit more challenging content, Locke's damage starts getting crept. But that's all I have to say. Again, if my how to play Locke video isn't out by now, uh, look forward to that. Otherwise, I'll just plug it recording this before the live stream. Let me know what you all think in the comments. Again, like the video, subscribe, uh, check out my other stuff, Ranting Hour. Memberships, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.